Hey there, Cooney Boy here. Uh, today we're going to take a look at rocker switches. They're all over the place now. Um, you can buy them on eBay, on Amazon, local shops and whatnot. Uh, if you get them on eBay or Amazon, a lot of times they do not come with the wiring instructions. So that's what we're going to do today. A little tutorial on how to wire these two guys. Uh, this one's a five pole and if you don't have wiring instructions and not too familiar with these things, it can be kind of daunting to look at the back and figure out where you got to put the wires and whatnot. So we're going to do that today. Um, one of the things you're going to need is some heat shrink. This stuff is invaluable. If you do any wiring at all, you should have this in your kit at all times. Uh, it's just brilliant. Um, you're going to need some wire. I have uh, picked up some 16 gauge. This is red and black. It's a waterproof speaker wire actually. So good for outdoor applications and that. Uh, nice and thick casing on it. Uh, you're going to need some spade connectors. I have pulled out two different types, two different sizes. Um, the red is a smaller gauge than the blue. Uh, the red would be sufficient for most of the wiring applications, although there are a couple on these switches that you have to put two wires into a single spade connector, so the blue is better for that. Um, you're going to need some short pieces of wire, the spade connectors, a heat shrink, and some various tools. So here we go. First of all, you're going to take, start. we'll start with the black one here. Just do the ground, make it nice and easy. And you strip off a portion of that. Always twist your wires a little bit so that when you put them into the um, connector, they don't fray and leave bare wire sticking out. I also like to make sure my connections are short because you do not really need a whole lot of extra bared wire on there and what the more you have the more problems you can have with them so get those nicely seated into it you're going to do two a short one and a long one into one of the blue connectors and make sure you pinch it on the if you look inside there's a seam that runs down that connects the two where they meet uh, you want to pinch it on the opposite side of that so you're not splitting the seam now this side here again we can use one of the red ones because it's not that long and again we trim them down a little bit pop them in and give it a small punch there we go you don't need to push these a lot you just have to just enough to um, pinch the wires on the inside you don't have to mash the things beyond belief or recognition or whatnot this is a case of more is not better on that so now we will do the red ones and these things are great um, the switches work for just about everything anywhere you could uh, utilize a switch obviously um, your RV, your truck, your car, off-road vehicles. Um, they work for anything you could put a switch onto. This one here is going to be for uh, an LED bar light, uh, 50 inch. So it has to have the proper ampage in that for it. And these switches are sufficient to handle that by themselves. But I have actually decided to um, run relays just to be on the safe side. Last thing you want is to have too much power going through your switch and have it melt up in the dash or something causing a fire or risk of a fire. So that we do not want. Other than that, it's a pretty simple process. So that's how those go together. And then once you've done them, you'll take your heat shrink and put them over the end, something like that. And, and you just give it a little bit of flame to it and it reduces the exposed metal so you run less of a risk of um, shorting something out just by crossing the wire or having it touch something else grounding out or whatnot. It's not necessary but I like to do it on most of my connections just to be on the safe side. Now, those would go together so where's our switch here so the top ones on these ones with your center pole on the left hand side that is 
your top here are your grounds. So without putting the heat shrink on just to save time here. Put your grounds on. And this, these ones here, they go on your bottom. So these ones are to your load. So the top ones are your grounds. The bottom ones here are your out to the whatever you're trying to power. Like I said, in this case, it's going to be a light bar. So those ones go out to the light bar. And your last one here is for your power to the battery. And you will need to have this fused in between the battery and your relay battery or and switch basically in line before it reaches there and just because this one is the power source I'll show this one again you can use a lighter a lot of people like to use a heat gun um, for just ease of use right today doing a video and noise and whatnot I'm using my lighter so then this one goes on here and this one goes to your battery so basically there you have it now this one here is already wired up as you can see it's got the nifty zombie light thing on there and like I said before you have your battery positive and your negative obviously for 12 volt and there it is your zombie lights when it's on it shows different when it's off and all wired up nice and neat and tidy looks like a pro job all right hope this answered any questions you might have had and i hope you enjoyed the video leave comments toss a like if you like the video and have a great day